I had this whole rack put together. Then I got a visit from a couple of viewers who were in town. Uh, shout out to Eric and Jen. Uh, they spent a couple hours here chit-chatting with me. Uh, they had a roof rack, an 80-20 roof rack, on top of their Ford Transit. They're doing a build-out. He used all 80-20 hardware. Within three months, it was all rusted. All, all the screws and these bridge plates. So, what did I do today? Took the whole rack apart. I took this whole rack apart. Thankfully, I didn't have the solar panels up just yet. But I'm going to replace all of these 80-20 bolts with stainless steel. They're all Loctited in, of course. But there's no way in the world I want to do this twice. I'm doing it twice, but I didn't want to do it twice in three months with everything up here. To start the roof rack, I chose the ProMaster mounting brackets from Unaka. Very well made, precise, easy to work with. I would have liked the 8020 mounting brackets to be mounted inboard of the side rails. Purely an aesthetic wish. I don't normally take visits from viewers. I get requests for people to stop in all the time, I get a lot of them. And I just, I can't say yes to, to these, these visits because I'd never get any work done. But for some reason, you know, they were in town visiting family. And I said, all right, yeah, sure, stop in, we'll keep it brief. Uh, but if I'd said no to them, I'd have never known, I'd have never learned about those rusty bolts. And I would have had an issue here, so. It's a funny thing, I, I keep saying that uh, I got a guardian angel who watches over me. You know, they're up there, it's a, probably a full-time job, there's probably two or three of them up there that have to look after me. And every morning I say, I wonder what he's gonna get into today. The side rails are the first to be installed. 15 series 8020, the style with the ridges rather than smooth. My little pea brain tells me the ridges will disrupt the wind and negate vibration or harmonics. I decided to span the length needed using two sections with mending plates in the middle to connect them. Easier to handle and allows for modification in the future. All right, come on, you little bugger. Get in there. I love it. I've got a total of five crossbars, but the next step is actually preloading my side rails. Remember what I said about um, 80-20, you gotta preload before you captivate a channel. So I laid these up here for illustrative purposes only. Right now, the next step is to preload. Put my lock tight, get my, my T-nuts on, and slide all these elbows into place. Then I attach them to my crossbars. All right, you see what I got going? Here's my preloaded elbow, and I put on uh, another T-nut. This way, towards this end, I can slide this in. It's a lot easier than having to thread it while it's inside the channel. And just keep them loose till you get everybody in position where you want them. After I got all the crossbars in place, I fitted a full length 15 series on top of all the crossbars. One piece all the way down the line. And this is to hold my awning. You can see the brackets are installed. And this is a Fiamma awning. There's one of the brackets right there. Fully adjustable, the full length of the uh, 8020. There are three points of connection for the awning. And uh, they, uh, like I say, this crossbar, the awning bar sits on top of my crossbars. So once that awning is in place, you have the ability to tune it inboard or outboard, depending on how wide your solar panels are. 
So if you did want to get larger solar panels, you could slide this out on the crossbars. But before I start tuning this thing and getting it all plumb and squared up, I've got to take it down back on the bench and remove all this black 8020 hardware and replace it with stainless steel. This piece is the full length of the awning, the Fiamma awning. Easy. Here we go. Actually, before I start taking this apart, this is upside down, but that's a close-up of the awning bracket that's provided with the Fiamma awning. It is a wall-mounted awning. This awning is intended for the side of a Class A motorhome, for instance. Uh, there's two types of mountings. You can get a wall-mounted, which is what this is, and you can get a roof-mounted, uh, which a lot of the manufacturers do. Uh, I know my Pleasureway had a roof-mounted awning, so the brackets are bolted onto the chassis, the roof. You're, you're making holes through the roof. Uh, since this is a fully custom job, uh, I mounted my, my awning brackets, but then I backed it with another 80-20 elbow. This is an extended elbow on one side. Let's see if you can see that without any glare. Yeah, there you go. Black screw. I got to change that out to stainless steel. So that's what I'm going to do. Change all the screws out to stainless. Get this back up there. Uh, and then it's time for the solar panels. I mounted the four rear solar panels in pairs lengthwise using inch and a quarter aluminum angle. I pre-drilled everything, then hoisted it up onto the roof. Let's see how this works. Take it up. Easy, easy. Ooh. Put it here. Then lean it easy, easy, carefully. That's it. Push it and let weight be your co pilot. There we go. Oh, about that. Who says you can't work alone? <laughs> 